Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. Today we're with the Combo E Cargo specifically, so a small electric van. If you're interested in more electric vans, there's a full playlist on the channel. I'll stick a link up on the screen and also in the description, but uh, I have about 10 or 15 electric vans there now. So if that's something that you or your business is interested in, let me know. So we're looking at the Combo E Cargo today. We will have the Combo E Life, which is the passenger version with the seats coming on the channel soon. But this is all part of that Stellantis group. So you have your Citroen, you have your Opel or Vauxhall, depending on what company you're in, country you're in. Uh, you have your Peugeot, you also have your Fiat and Toyota are basing their electric vans on the Stellantis platform. And so they'll all look kind of similar, but you will be able to obviously tell them the difference on the road. Let's start at the front and move away down along back. Uh, like all of the Stellantis vans, nice short stubby nose. There is no storage in underneath here. You have your LED uh, running daylight, but halogen bulbs, which is a, a bit sad to see. Uh, you've got your Opel or Vauxhall badge, which are chrome flashing either side. Then you've got your body color bumpers, your fog lights. So. Two trims here in Ireland, you've got the Edition and the Sportive, and again, in the United Kingdom or other markets, you may have different trims and they may be slightly different, so just make sure you reach out to your dealer to see which level you have and what the options are. Active cooling in underneath and that body coloured splitter at the front as well. Nice grille, nice front, lovely size of a van. I remember these vans when they were, I thought they were a lot shorter. Down along the side, no matter what trim, you're going to get the 16 inch steel wheels with the plastic hubcaps, little dinky uh, indicator. Um, on the sportive trim, you're going to get body colored door mirrors and handles. Um, this is a first edition or out of the factory, so this is as much as it got the fog lights, which are on the sportive trim, it didn't get the body colored, but it will come with that. Um, and these are, you can fold them in and out, but they're not retractable themselves. Good size. Um, little side mirror there for that blind spot. Decent side mirrors, windows. Um, your, you've got this black molding down along the side. Again, can come body colored depending on the trim. Double sliding doors, so one either side, and we'll talk about the cargo space once we get around the back and turn it around. And this is your charging port here where the original fuel cap would be. Uh, AC, it can go 7.4 is the standard, but you can spec it up to 11, I'm told. And then on DC, like all of the Stellantis cars and vans, it goes up to 100 kilowatt on DC. Nice, good, big size of a van, uh, up to 4.3 meters cubed internally. There's some nice features going on with the seats inside as well. We'll talk about that once we get inside. Let's spin it around and have a look at the back. But overall, some decent flat panels for that sign writing element or to get the whole van wrapped. I think it looks well, it looks smart. Let's spin it around. Down along the back, you've got your body color bumpers on this version. Nice unit taillight with your indicators, LED, or sorry, um, halogen, unfortunately. So I'd love to see those getting upgraded. You've got your high level brake light here. You can get it with that reversing camera and it's a, like a large black unit with that 360 um, fisheye lens in underneath. So that's an option if you want it as well. You've got your Opel badge. The only way you're going to know this is an electric van is that one single E there. Obviously no tailpipes and you won't hear it, but that's the only one there. And again, you can get it with that body colored panel. 6040 on the doors. And again, you can spec it so that you can have the barn opening doors depending on your trim or depending on the marker that you want. So they'll open 90 degrees. Then with the yellow tab, they'll go 180 on both sides. This van has been floored uh, with six tie off points. You've got your, again, your halogen uh, light inside. The, I said this was twin sliding doors, it's actually not, because it's the H1 L1. So uh, they're all H1 height wise, but L1, you can get it in L2. And again, depending on your market. Um, here in Ireland, we're starting off with the L1. And with the L2, I think that's got that double sliding doors. Otherwise inside, fairly basic inside. I'll bring the uh, camera up and we can have a bit more of an in-depth look as to some of the features that are here in the back. Any of the Stellantis uh, vans have, if you spot this luminous yellow, you'll know there's something going on there. So you'll see two of them, so in the factory, it's either left-hand or right-hand drive, but because we're right-hand drive, you've got this hatch on the right-hand side. So the yellow little lever, and that lies flat, or you can take it away as well. We've got a cover there as well, and I'll show you what that's about as well. And so there is a blue tab in on the front seat, and that folds it all the way down so that increases the overall cubic capacity to 4.3 i think in the rear itself is about 
eight, I believe. So you're getting an extra half a cube uh, within that space. So that's what that, spot, that, that hatch is about if you need it. Um, but you can do other stuff in this hatch inside as well. Good space in the back if you want the L1 version and if you need the L2 version um, for the longer bits and that second sliding door uh, also very handy. As well as that seat folding flat, you'll see another yellow identifier handle down here. And if you pop that up, you'll actually be able to lift the whole seat. So if you needed to store something in the front without breaking it through, you also have that option there as well. So really smart thinking. Let's have a full look around the cabin on the inside. What's it like inside the Combo E Cargo? Probably a better spec than, if I think it was the Rifter, the Peugeot partner, apologies, that I looked at and it was a small bit plainer than this. So it's good to see that the, the spec is higher on this. So on the door you have your adjustable electric side mirrors and you have your up and down on the electric mirrors, passenger and driver. And you also have a very handy button with regards to locking or unlocking the rear cargo area. So that's all here. Good big chunky handle um, and then a decent sized door bin with a secondary pocket there and your speaker tweeter up here on the inside. Moving over then you've got a smaller kind of a coffee cup hole Holder. You've got some good document storage in on top of the dash. You've got another pocket in and behind the infotainment screen and another coffee cup holder on the left hand side. So that's the dash. Up on top you've got a nice parcel shelf as well and two good big um, uh, sun visors. SOS in the head unit and uh, call assist and you have your lights whether they're on or off, reading lights etc. Moving down, uh, it's a traditional key. And like all of Slantis, you have to turn it to engage it and then turn it again and it tells you that it's ready. Decent size uh, infotainment, so, uh, or sorry, driver, inf in driver cluster. Left hand side is whether you're taking energy or putting energy back in with the regenerative braking. Right hand side is your speed. Um, whether you're, what energy you're using for heating the cabin well, in regards to the AC and on the right hand side then you've got a digital, um, or sorry, an analog, uh, uh, dial for your battery level and then the and tiny little screen then in the middle. Uh -huh. uh, on the steering wheel itself it is reach and rake, it should be anywhere, up, down, in, out, yeah. Um, left hand side is your lights and you've got automatic lights which is good to see, right hand side is your wipers, on the steering wheel itself you've got your uh, cruise control, your uh, speed limit, you've got your heated steering wheel and you've got an memory function as well and on the right hand side you've got your phone your audio uh, radio up and downs three spoke steering wheel leather clad really nice actually uh, on the above my knee you've got your uh, lights automatic which is great to see uh, front and rear poor weather lights or fog lights as we used to call it the level and also the um, brightness and you've got your preconditioning for your heating uh, for your charging and then your ESG um, lane assist whether you want it on or off some blanked off switches which I'm not a fan of moving over nice big wide infotainment screen you've got your radio you've got your car features you've got your satellite navigation which is an optional extra on this one but it is built in but you can use your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay you've got your electric electric stuff with regards to flow statistics and charge uh, and then you've got your telephone as well. USB type A to connect, it's not wireless. And you've got a nice physical knob for volume and also for power on and power off. Hazard, center locking underneath that, then you've got a bank of information with regards to your heating and ventilation system. So you've got your speed, recirculation, defogger, uh, whether you want the air blown at your feet or your face, uh, heated wing mirrors, which is great to see, uh, the air con, you can turn it on or off, and then you can have the temperature, then it's all physically done. Point holder, that little slot. If you know in the comments what that little slot for, Paul Kirby, an EV van man, if you're watching this review, what's that little slot for? I thought it was for like a little espresso shot or something like that, but you let me know. It could be for coins as well, but there's a coin slot there. And then you've got that drive module because this isn't a ground up electric van it is based on that combustion platform usually the gear selector would be here <coughs> be that manual or automatic so this kind of encroaches into 
middle passenger leg room space so they don't really need it it should be probably up on the dashboard i appreciate that it's for the economies of scale it's coming out of the same factory you've got a slot for your phone and you can have an optional wireless charging pad there you've got your drive modes which are power normal and eco you've got your drive select with our park reverse neutral drive it's two-stage regenerative braking again like all of slantis so if you're doing a lot of town and city driving use that b mode and it just uh, regens not a one pedal driving what we mean by that is it doesn't allow you to fully brake when you take off the accelerator, but it does recoup some energy into the battery, and you'll see it on that gauge. And you've got your electronic handbrake. Another pocket in underneath this random 12 volt um, socket down here. Um, it's not bad, but it's another funny little spot. There is an element of the transmission tunnel. You've got a glove box at the top, you've got another shelf here, and you've got another cubby hole down along the side. Really nice cabin. Um, it's Three would be, it's a small city van, so three would be tight for sure. There is no armrest, but you do have, if there isn't a center passenger at the time, you can fold this down. You've got kind of a, um, uh, like a laptop table or something that you could eat at. So that's really handy as well. I really like those kind of smart features that you can get. That's the inside of the Combo E Cargo. Let's take it out for a drive. What's it like driving the Combo E? And um, before we take it out, I just want to run through some of the features that are available. Depending on the market that you're in, will dictate whether you have these features or not. So we talked about the cargo size and the loading space and the payload. There is a flap that you can get in the rear um, top of the rear loading bay that if you want something sticking out the back, again, optional. There's a, this is optional depending on the market, the shelf over your head. You've got, the seat bench, uh, which is also optional, foldable passenger seat, the cabin bulkhead, uh, the sliding doors on either side, whether you have a hatch at the back with the tailgate, um, and then you have LED daytime running lights, automatic emergency braking is standard, lane keep assist is optional, speed sign recognition is optional, safety and airbags, depending on the standard air, airbags on the driver's side are standard, but the cabin side of things, the crew side of things is optional, blind spot alert is optional, hill descent control and flank guard are optional, uh, reversing camera would be great to have on it, it only currently has sensors, um, head up display is optional, trailer stability control, uh, overload indicator, so it's like a little light in the back of the actual uh, payload area. There's a little sensor as it tells you whether you're over the weight or not. Navigation built in is optional, wireless charging pad is optional, uh, connected services, IntelliGrip, so there is that hole in the dash here and uh, that's usually where there's the different um, modes of uh, low grip conditions, etc., etc. So that's going on here. Let me plug in my phone. So the USB is at the bottom of the actual. Um, and last thing before we start off is like a lot of the Stellantis, so it's sibling in Peugeot and in Citroen. It has this weird. It's raining now, but the window goes all the way down. But this bit of styling here, it's a bit funny. So you need to. Turn the key, it is a traditional key, uh, and you need to turn it to initiate, 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 and then one more go, and then it's go, it goes ready. Then you've got two stage driving, D and B modes, and B is for second stage regeneration. You've got a handbrake that you need to take off. Uh, wipers are automatic, it tells you my, 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 my parking is released. I don't know why they have a rear view camera, but there's a bulkhead in this one, a rear view mirror and it's bulkhead in this one. Driving wise, like a lot of electric vans, so smooth. My left leg doesn't know what to do um, because it is all automatic or single gear, uh, if we're exact. Uh, I like a lot of Stellantis vans. I always talk about how the mirrors, I'd love if they were bigger, but um, a pillar is not bad, but yeah, there is a bit of a blind spot down there, so blind spot detection would be nice. There is a nice quarter panel inside here, but with the solid bulkhead, you're not seeing anything anyway. Uh, practicality is good. Lots of pocky, ho cubby holes and pockets, like in front of the drivers. Um, steering wheel, you've got that. Uh, storage area, you've got your coffee cup holders. Seat and position is really nice. There isn't an armrest on this version, um, and so what I like is the fact the ability to put down this central seat 
um, you can have it coming all the way out. Now there is a little warning on the top of it there that says don't have it over in front of you when you're driving. Uh, so having it either here, and that's perfect for having your arm down if you want it, but obviously two hands on the wheel, Des, isn't that correct? If you're interested in more electric vans, I've got all different sizes, everything from the smaller stuff like this all the way up to the e-sprinter from Mercedes-Benz, the Renault Traffic, etc. So the large panel vans. On a drive to 12,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. There is a playlist for all types of electric vans, as I was just talking about there. I've nearly reviewed all of them in the market. There's only a few more. And recently back from um, the IAA transportation show in Hanover. Suspension is nicely weighted, but it's difficult judging a van with regards to weight in the back when I get an empty van and it's very difficult for me to get payload for the back of it. Um, but suspension is set up well for even for an empty van and so with a bit of weight in the back I would think it would only perform even better. The steering wheel, this version and the specification of this is really well spec'd. It's a heated steering wheel and it has the ability for all the controls. So it's got the menu, the cruise control, um, volume, etc, etc is all on the steering wheel. So it's like a leather, three spoke leather steering wheel. That's good. Driver display is good. Analog needles on battery being used, your kilometer per hour, your whether you're uh, how much aggressively you're taking a uh, battery from with regards to um, the air conditioning, your percentage of battery left, and that's in an analog steering wheel, but also on a little, um, also on a digital readout at the bottom of the screen. Visibility is good. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice, because of that seating position, it's very nicely um there's lots there's a lot of dash now this is where you're not getting a ground up ev so when you look at the likes of the id buzz where you're sitting right up to the nose of the van whereas this one obviously you can get combustion engine versions of it but as electric vans go and the ones that i've reviewed of this size the berlingo the combo e the partner um, you know, this one is very well specced in fairness to it. As, as different countries will bring in different specifications, it's great to have air conditioning, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's wired, it's fine, but once you get it wired in, it's all good. So yeah, driving the Opel Combo E, this is perfect for parcel delivery for tradespeople that have smaller routes with that range. And so range wise, efficiency wise, we're getting um, statistics of between there now, we're getting 16 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers on the motorway earlier was going down and that was giving me at the maximum. I wonder, can you pick that up on the volume out here? We've got some glass recycling going on. And yeah, 23 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which isn't bad. Obviously that's gonna go down with load, as in it's gonna get worse. The efficiency is gonna get worse. Steering wheel is uh, reach and rake and perfect. I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters. So like headroom is massive as seating position is perfect. Hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the Opel Combo E Cargo. Um, let me know in the comments if you're thinking about transitioning to an electric vehicle for your business. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.